With week eight on tap, let's talk about the waiver wire ads and stashes. So number one on the list is Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt's already rostered in about 65% of leagues, but if he is somehow available in yours, you definitely want to scoop him up. Jerome Ford went down yesterday with a low-grade high ankle sprain, and he's set to miss a couple of weeks. But even before Ford went down, we saw Hunt's role increase. Over the last two weeks, he's had 25 touches for 102 yards and three touchdowns. And the Browns actually have the seventh highest rushing play percentage in the league, right around 46%. And with the way the quarterback situation has been in Cleveland, I have to think they're going to continue to run the ball at a high rate. This week they go up against Seattle, who's actually more vulnerable against the pass. They actually allowed the sixth fewest rushing yards per game, right around 87. But with the quarterback situation in flux, like I mentioned, they're going to have to commit to the run. Surprisingly, Pierre Strong has actually outsnapped Kareem Hunt. But don't get it mixed up. Hunt is the guy to own. He's the one who's familiar with the offense. We've seen him get the ball around the goal line. And I expect that to be the case moving forward. But speaking of Strong, Strong is still worth a stash in my opinion. He's rostered in only 1% of leagues, and if you have space at the end of your bench, he might be someone to consider. If Hunt goes down or misses any time over the next few weeks, then Strong will be thrust into the starter role. At this point, Cleveland only has two healthy backs, and it's got to be one of them carrying the mail. Next up, Daryl Henderson. Henderson's only rostered in 25% of leagues, and after all the drama around Zach Evans, he was the one to actually emerge from the group. Yesterday, he had 19 touches for 66 yards and a touchdown, and it seems like he's the guy to own in LA while Kyron Williams and Ronnie Rivers are out on IR. Despite Royce Freeman being more efficient with his 12 touches yesterday and going for 66 yards, it seems like Henderson is the guy they trust. He's been on the team before, he's familiar with the system, and I think McVay has a lot of trust in him. He might bounce back and forth between the practice squad, but I think for as long as Williams and Rivers are out, he's going to be the guy you want to own. I expect him to get the goal line work and still be involved in the passing game, and this week to go up against Dallas, who's actually been middle of the pack in terms of rushing yards allowed per game, so he should be able to find some success. Surprisingly, Zach Evans didn't even play a snap, and Miles Gaskin was inactive for this game, so I think it's going to be Royce Freeman and Daryl Henderson. Freeman may be worth an add as well, just because if Henderson goes down, Freeman's definitely going to have some value. As it is, he kind of has some low-end RB3 value. We saw him get touches yesterday, like I mentioned. We saw him a lot on third down and pass protection. He seems to be pretty good at that. So he has a role in this offense for the next three weeks, just like Henderson. And it'll be interesting to see how the snaps are distributed in week eight. Next up, Dalton Kincaid. Kincaid kind of had a coming out party yesterday against New England, getting eight receptions for 75 yards. And with Dawson Knox set to have surgery on his wrist, Kincaid's going to be thrust into a near every down roll. At this point, we've seen Knox play ahead of Kincaid a little bit, but I think it was only a matter of time before Kincaid overtook him. And I think with the door being opened right now with Knox's injury, Kincaid has a great opportunity to take a hold of this job. Knox has no timetable for a return, and Kincaid was a first-round pick. This week, they go up against the Buccaneers, who are far more vulnerable against the pass than they are against the run. They allowed the sixth-most passing yards per game, so I think Kincaid should have a good chance to build off of his performance he had against New England. He is rostered in 43% of leagues, but I expect that number to go up pretty substantially. Staying on the topic of tight ends, let's talk about Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill is rostered in 11% of leagues, and over the last two weeks, we've seen a big uptick in his work. He has 11 receptions for 99 yards over that time span. And this week, he gets the cold tour in the bottom half in terms of passing yards allowed. Now, I should mention Juwan Johnson has been out of the lineup, so Hill has definitely gotten more opportunities. And Johnson is supposed to come back this week, so we may see Hill's reception count fall off a cliff. But he's definitely going to be involved in the running game. He should get work near the goal line. And I think he's kind of a riskier pickup, but he's definitely someone to add. He has enough of a gadget role to warrant keeping on your bench. Over the last two weeks, he has 17 total touches for 119 yards and a touchdown. And they definitely are going to get him on the field. He's going to chip in through passing, running, and receiving. So if you're looking for a tight end with good upside that's a little bit volatile, Hill may be your guy. He's only had one game where he didn't have multiple carries. So they definitely are going to keep using him. And I would imagine, like I mentioned, he's going to be used heavily around the goal line moving forward. Lastly on our list, Trey McBride. McBride's rostered in 2% of leagues, and over the last couple of weeks, he's actually outsnapped Zach Ertz. And with Zach Ertz going on IR today with a strained quadriceps, that paves the way for McBride to take a hold of this job. McBride was a second round pick, and he actually won the Mackey Award in 2021. So he's got a lot of ball skills, he just needs opportunity. And over the first five weeks of this year, Ertz has averaged around 6.8 targets per game, so that's going to have to go somewhere. I think with the way McBride's usage has been trending, especially over the last two weeks, he was already kind of worth picking up and putting on your bench if you had a roster spot. This week he goes up against Baltimore, which is not a good matchup. They allowed the second fewest passing yards per game. But after this week, he'll probably get some solid volume for a tight end. 
If he's able to perform while Ertz is out, there's a very good chance he keeps the job. Those are the waiver wire ads and stashes heading into week eight. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and let me know your thoughts heading into week eight in the comments below. Thank you.